I tried knitting a pair of socks with double pointed needles two weeks before I filmed this video. Before that, I had never ever used DPNs. Now I'm on my third sock and I went through a lot of trial and error to finally find a way of knitting with DPNs that really works for me. So in this video, I will give you a step-by-step -step tutorial that shows you exactly how to knit with double pointed needles. So let's get right into it. To follow along with me, you will need a set of DPNs. Now I am using a set uh, that's made by Clover and they're made out of bamboo. And I'm using the size 2.25 millimeters, number one. I believe these are the smallest they come and they measure five inches. And this is a set of five needles. And you'll also need a skein of yarn. And now we're ready to get started. For the first step, we're going to learn how to get our skein of yarn onto our double pointed needles. Now, I find this part much easier if you go ahead and cast on all of your stitches onto one needle and then distribute all of the stitches evenly onto the rest of your needles. So I'm going to move these out of the way and go ahead and show you how to do that. Now I am using the German twisted cast on method. This is a stretchy cast on technique that is very similar to a normal long tail cast on, except that it provides more stretch at the top, which is great for socks, which is what I will be using this project for, but feel free to use any cast on method of choice. We want to measure out a long tail to begin the cast on. I want 35 inches for my tail, so I am using my needle as a ruler. That way I can measure out the length that I want. Now I am casting on a pair of adult socks for this tutorial, so our measurements might differ here. So once we have our yarn all measured out, go ahead and make a slip knot. And then we'll take that slip knot and slide it right onto one of our needles. So after we have our slip knot on here, we are ready to get started with the cast on. So to do the German twisted cast on, that's what I'll show you here. We're going to grasp the two strands of yarn coming from the needle in my last three fingers. Now I'm going to take my thumb and index finger on my left hand and push them through the center of the yarn coming off the needle and make a simple diamond shape. And then I'm going to bring my right hand down until it looks kind of like a slingshot with the yarn going around my fingers. So now for the German twisted cast on, I'm going to take my needle in my right hand. I'm going to go underneath where that yarn crosses here from my left or from my thumb. Then I'm going to take the piece of yarn that's closest to my needle and it's farthest away from me from my thumb. I'm going to take that and go underneath the first loop coming off my thumb. Then I'm going to take the needle over and to the right side of the yarn coming off of my index finger. Now this part can be a little tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it, uh, it'll you'll speed through it. So take your needle now and grasp onto that yarn that's coming off of your index finger, and we want to pull it through that tiny little hole that we made um, that's underneath where the yarn crosses from our thumb. So I'm going to take that yarn through there and now I have a second loop. I can release my thumb and I'm going to tighten that onto my needle. So again, I take my right needle, go under where that yarn crosses, take the yarn with my needle that's closest or farthest away from me, then I take it over and to the right of that yarn on my index finger. Then I'm going to take that yarn through that tiny hole that we created there. And I'm going to do this until I have the number of cast on stitches according to my pattern and then add one extra cast on stitch. And I will get back to why we add one extra um, because we will use this whenever we join the round. But that will be step number three. So go ahead and continue casting on until you have the number of stitches your pattern calls for plus one more. So after you have all of your stitches cast on, we want to evenly distribute these stitches onto your other needles. So for this tutorial, I will only be using uh, four needles, which means I will be using three needles to hold my stitches. Uh, but the same thing does apply if you're using more needles. 
So the way to do this is slipping stitches off of the first needle and then onto the next needle. So for this pattern that I'm following, I needed to cast on 60 stitches plus one, so I have 61 on my needles. And since I'm using three, I want to distribute 20 stitches onto my other two needles. That way I will end up with 60 stitches, 20 on each needle. So to evenly distribute your stitches, just go ahead and grab another needle and then we're just going to start taking them off of the tip and you just uh, slide it into the stitch, slide it off of the stitch and then just continue this until all of your stitches are distributed evenly on your needles. When you have the amount of stitches necessary on your first needle, move those stitches into the center so you don't risk dropping any off the side. Now grab your next needle and continue the same process of sliding stitches off one by one. And again, I'm only distributing my stitches onto three needles for this tutorial, but if you want to use more, just continue moving stitches in the same manner. And now you have all of your stitches distributed evenly across your needles. Now we're ready to join in the round. So now that we have all of our stitches cast onto our needles, we are ready to join the round, which means we join these two needles that just flop around. We'll join them right here so that we can continue knitting in a spiral. But the first thing that you wanna do, and this is probably easier if you lay your needles down on the table, is you wanna make sure that your stitches are not twisted, which mine are beginning to twist right here. But the way to fix that is going to be to push the bottom of the stitches, which is where those ridges are, and point them to the center of where your needles are um, laying down. Because we're going to be making a triangle like so. So you want all of your, the inside or the bottom of your stitches facing the inside. And I'm going to go ahead and pick this up so that you can see what I'm talking about. But remember that one extra stitch that I asked you to cast on? Well, this is where we will use it. We want to slip the last stitch, which is this one right here where my working yarn is coming from. This is the last stitch and we want to slip it off of our right needle onto our left needle. So to do so, we can slide our stitches carefully, not to twist them, but slide those stitches a little closer to the tip of the needles so that it's easier to get to. And do that on both sides. I'm just going to slide this stitch off of the right needle onto my left needle like so. And then I can always pull at the yarn tail so that that stitch closes. So you can see here that this is where we're going to join, but it's not joined just yet. We need to do one extra, or we need to do one more step. So here's our last stitch that we cast on, and here is that first stitch that we cast on. And to join these together, we want to knit both of these stitches together. So I'm gonna slide these a little closer so that it's easier to get to. And I'm gonna take my right needle, I'm gonna insert it into the front of both of those stitches, just like I'm making a knit stitch. And then I am going to yarn over and just pull that yarn through and then drop both of those stitches off of that right needle ah. and now we have joined in the round and we only have the 60 stitches cast on to our needles now we want to position our needles in a way that we can begin knitting efficiently so I like to look at my needles this way with the bottom of the triangle facing me and I want to place the right side of the bottom needle. I want this one to be under the needle that's coming off of the right side. So I'm going to switch that over so that this needle is on top of the right side of the bottom needle. But on the left side, I want this needle to be on top, just like so. Then whenever I flip it around this side, I want the right side of that bottom needle to be underneath, which it is, and then I want that left side on top of that needle, which it is. And so whenever I flip it a third time, that's exactly what I should have here as well. That bottom part of the left side should be underneath and the left side is on top 
And this is just going to help us so that whenever we knit, so that we always end up above that needle so that none of our stitches get caught. And then you can do the same thing all the way around. So once your needles look like this, we will now introduce our empty needle. So we want our yarn, the working yarn, always coming from the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and tension that. And I am a continental knitter, so I hold it in my left hand. Then my empty needle will go in my right hand. So now I'm going to push this underneath because we don't need that. So whenever you introduce the empty needle, we can go ahead. We're going to be knitting on this first needle right here. So what I like to do is push the top of this one, the needle that I'll be knitting on, to the top so that both edges are along the top. It's easier to knit that way. Now we want to take our empty needle and go underneath this needle and start knitting along this row of stitches. Now this won't compromise your knitting in any way. It will feel normal, I promise. But we go underneath because when we reach the end of the row, that needle will be in the original position that we want, where the right side will be under one needle and the left side will end up on the top of this other needle. And I will show you that in just a second. And then when we flip our work around to knit along our second needle, we are already set up. And I find that this way of knitting with double pointed needles is very efficient. So once we're done, we are left with an empty needle in our left hand. So I'm gonna scoot these stitches back over to the center so we don't drop any. And looking at this, now we have, when, since we inserted our needle underneath the one um, that is coming off to the side, our needle on the right side is still underneath this needle, even though we popped it up to the top whenever we started knitting. It's because that empty needle was pushed underneath then we started knitting and now our left side is on the top, which is what we want. And whenever we flip it around, we have the same exact position. And now we take our empty needle into our right hand and continue knitting on this side and going all the way around, just continuing in the pattern. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. And I will see y'all in the next video.